It's one of my favorite verses, Romans chapter 1, verse 16. The verse reads as follows. For I am not ashamed, the Apostle Paul says, of the gospel, because it's the power of God that brings salvation to everyone who believes, first to the Jew and then to the Gentile. And so what we've been asserting is the last few weeks that the gospel, the good news of Jesus Christ, can meet the deepest needs in a person's life, my needs and your needs, anyone's needs. But there has to be that relationship with him. It's for the person who believes, who trusts, who gives themselves to the Lord, who has Christ literally living in their lives because they've asked him to come live in their lives. And so we've said he meets the need for helping us understand where we came from, God made us, that uh, he helps us understand uh, why we're valuable and what we mean to God. And number three, we talked last time about that he meets the need of forgiving our sins and dealing with sin in our lives. And today we want to talk about the fact that Jesus gives us personal worth and value. You have significance, you have worth, you have value, regardless of how you feel about yourself. So a number of years ago, a man named Charles Cooley came up with this theory or this idea called, and he, by the way, was a respected sociologist, but he came up with this idea called the looking glass self. So if this is you or a person at the bottom of the triangle, what he would say would be this with this theory, that your self-concept, how you see yourself, will be determined by what you think the most important person in your life thinks about you. So my contention is if you put any human being at the apex of that triangle and what you think they think about you will determine how you see yourself, you're going to be disappointed. It's going to be kind of a roller coaster ride because there's no human being on the planet that can highly esteem you or me 100% of the time. And so let's talk about that for a second. The culture or the world around us says you have to have three things if you're going to be worth anything. For a teenager, it could be brains, beauty, physique, the physical self, brains, beauty, and things or stuff or material things. Another way to put it for uh, adults would be we have to have status, the world says, appearance, or performance. Now that's what the culture says. And what we need to understand is if we live by those criteria, the criteria of the culture around us, the criteria of the culture around us, we're never going to live up to that. There's always going to be somebody with more beauty, more bucks, more whatever. So you, you can't win at that one. What I need to understand is not so much what the world thinks about me, but what God thinks about me. Just want to give you one verse. The scripture tells us in Ephesians 2.10, that we are God's workmanship. It comes from a little Greek word called poiema, P-O-I-E-M-A. And what it means is this, that you, in God's eyes, are a work of art. You are his masterpiece. Your value, he is saying, is not based upon what you do, where you live, the clothes you wear, your body size or build, what you have or will accomplish in this life. What he's saying is your value comes from who made you and what he thinks about you. So what this is saying very simply and yet profoundly is this. If you put God at the apex of the triangle, he will never think anything any greater of you or any less of you than what he says in the scripture. He says, Sue, Jim, Pete, Sally, you are my masterpiece. Whether you know it or not, feel it or not, that's the truth. In other words, you are a child with value and worth of the most high God. You get that in your life and internalize that truth, and you will never be the same again. You think about that.